was my office. Mm -hmm. I was just under the same misconception as everyone else that if you've got that headset in your ear, you're okay. Mm. And so I had my headset and I drove and you're not safe. It doesn't protect you. It's not where your hands are. It's mm. where your head is. Mm. It's not where your hands are. It's where your head is. Yes. And so what do you want to say to people who think the opposite, who think as you did, well, at least I have the you know, headpiece? The man driving the car that hit my mother was driving for less than a quarter of a mile. He was on the phone for less than a minute. He couldn't do it. His brain couldn't handle it. And he never saw the light. He never tried to stop. So, I mean, you can't do it. You're not Superman. You, you aren't built that way. Tell everybody about your bumper sticker. <laughs> um, I just got so aggravated every time I drive around that I see people constantly on the phone. So I went and had a bumper sticker made that says a driver talking on a cell phone killed my mom. And so I can at least pull in front of people. And half of them are so into their phone conversations, they can't even read it. They don't even see it. No, but yeah. then I do, I do see a lot. And they, they get off the phone real quick and put it down and just look, look around. Yeah. So David Strayer is a professor and researcher at the University of Utah who has studied the effects of driver distractions for 10 years. And the bottom line, stand up and tell us, David. Well, the brain just doesn't work the way we'd like it to work. We can't multitask the way that uh, a lot of people think they can. Um, so we people, think we are. Many people think they're safer, they're safer drivers. A lot of people think they're better than average. They think that they're, uh, they think that they're, uh, they can talk and, and, or text while driving and it's the other person who, who's at fault. You know, it, it already is the most dangerous thing all of us do every day. But now with people texting and on the phone, it's like having a multitude of drunks out on, on, on the highway, isn't it? Well, certainly with texting, it's quite, quite, quite a bit worse than having a bunch of drunks on the road. So when you talk on the phone... Why is it worse than drunks? Well, when we look at crash risk, uh, the crash risk for someone who's just talking on a cell phone is that um, they're about four times more likely to be involved in an accident. When you're text messaging, the crash risk goes up to eight times. And to, for comparison purposes, someone who's uh, drunk at a 0.08 blood alcohol level has crash increase. So talking on a cell phone, it's about the same as driving drunk. Texting is a lot worse. So David's going to show us the pictures you have with you today. Show us. Okay, one of the, one of the things that we know when people are talking on a phone is that they, they get into kind of a, a tunnel vision. And so you see in this image here what someone would look like if they weren't distracted. And then they start talking on a cell phone. If you look at the next slide, you'll see that they start looking straight ahead and all the information in the periphery kind of, they're not, they're not looking at, they're not looking at their side mirrors. And so if this is the equivalent of what, talking on the phone? This is the equivalent of like talking on the phone. You don't see the information in the periphery. So if there's a, a car, a pedestrian or something like that, you just don't see it. And the reason you don't see it, explain it to our audience, is because your brain won't let you. That's right. You suffer from something called inattention blindness. And so if you look at this next slide here, this is a scene you might see if you're driving. We know that when you're looking at things and your eyes are out looking at the windshield, you don't see it. So the next slide will show you what you would see perhaps if you're on a cell phone. About half of that information is removed. It could be a stop sign. It could be a pedestrian. And so this inattention blindness makes us uh, drive in a way that makes it worse than drunk driving. And the reason for that is literally the way your brain works. Your brain can't take in all of that information and also be taking in the information from the phone and you talking on the phone. Your brain just can't do all of that at one time. That's what you're saying. That's right. We're just not wired to multitask in that way. We think we can do it. We simply can't. And we're deceiving ourselves that we think we are. Yeah. So you're missing something. Quite a bit. You're missing quite a bit. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, David. We'll be right back. But first, watch this stunning and disturbing, infuriating report. In 2008, a San Antonio bus driver was caught on video driving through rush hour traffic while texting away on his cell phone. He glanced up from his phone a split second before slamming directly into the car ahead. Months later in Los Angeles, a train conductor was so distracted, sending and receiving more than 40 text messages, that he missed a red light. His packed commuter train collided head on with a freight train. 135 people were injured. 25 people, including the conductor, were killed, making it the second worst commuter train crash in US history. Weeks later, 
while a school bus carrying 21 young students was stopped with its flashers on. A truck driver rammed his 18-wheel semi-truck into the back of the bus, pushing it over 200 feet before the bus burst into flames. 20 of the students escaped, but tragically, 13-year-old Margay Ski was killed. The driver admitted he had been distracted by his cell phone and didn't see the bus had stopped. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Lisa Ling's special report, why millions of women are using porn and erotica. Working women, stay-at-home moms, regular folks. One out of three online viewers of porn are women. That would mean it's pretty mainstream. And inside of every woman, there's a little Jenna Jameson. The most famous porn star in the world, Jenna Jameson. How many men have you been with? What is... CRA.com. Seventy-one percent of people between the ages of 18 and 49 admit that they text or talk on the phone while they drive. That's according to a recent survey. Now, if you're one of those people who think that you have got the safe texting and driving thing down, that you're better than everybody else, and that nothing like you've seen here today could ever possibly happen to you, well, my next three guests are right there with you. Meet Sean, a father of four. I think I have mastered the skills of texting behind the wheel. Uh, it'd be interesting to see something that proves me wrong. Carly, a stay-at-home mother of two. I've been texting before and have caught myself in the other lane, which is not good. And Jen, a 19-year-old college student and self-proclaimed super texter. Yeah, I text all the time when I'm behind the wheel. We wanted to gauge just how dangerous their driving habits might be. So the folks at Car and Driver magazine took our three distracted drivers to Audubon Country Club in suburban Chicago to put them to the test. We have two tests set up today. One is going to measure reaction time to a dummy brake light we have set up in the car. The reaction time test is very simple. I push this button here, it lights up the simulated brake light here, and then we record the time between that light coming on and the participant hitting the brake pedal. That's really important because when you're on a highway, you usually are responding to a brake light ahead of you. So that's meant to replicate that. The second test is a slalom test, where we're going to measure people's deviation from their intended path while they're texting. We're going to do each test twice. The first one will be without any distraction, and then we'll repeat that test while texting. With a car rigged to measure the results, our participants hit the road. The drills were pretty simple when the drivers focused on driving. Not a problem. But what happened when texting was added to the mix? First up, super texter Jen. I got out of the wheel. <laughs> Oops, that was a code. That was not good. Next, our confident multitasker, Sean. Wow. Oh, no. Got a code. And finally, stay at home mom, Carly. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So we just got done analyzing the data, and what we found is really going to shock our participants. Okay, we'll find out the results of the road test. We'll be right back. All new, it's his first time here, Ryan Seacrest. Of all the jobs that you do, which is your favorite one? You like being this busy? It's $45 million deal. That is pressure. The American Idol school. She is one of the kindest people. What's your relationship really like? And his past. I would never have recognized you. Then it's a food revolution and super... Next.